Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 9th of July. Indian Prime Minister meets UAE Foreign Minister in New Delhi. Taliban agrees to reduce violence after intra-Afghan peacemaking in Doha. And Pakistani Prime Minister's government to end soon claims former President Zardari. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday met UAE Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan in New Delhi and held talks of mutual interest. The UAE Foreign Minister, who is on a three-day visit to India, also met his Indian counterpart S. Shankar on Monday to boost bilateral ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday met United Arab Emirates or UAE Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan in New Delhi. Both the leaders held talks of mutual interest in a bid to bolster bilateral ties between India and the UAE. The UAE Foreign Minister met his Indian counterpart S. J. Shankar on Monday evening to boost bilateral ties. During their meeting, the two leaders discussed relations in political, economic, investment, trade, energy and other sectors. UAE is India's third largest trade partner and fourth largest energy supplier, according to the country's foreign ministry. The two-day intra-Afghan talks to support peace efforts in Afghanistan concluded in Doha on Monday, where a group of Taliban members met a 60-member delegation of Afghan representatives. The meeting, brokered by Qatar and Germany, followed separate talks between Taliban and U.S. diplomats to end the longest ever war in Afghanistan. The two-day intra-Afghan talks to support peace efforts in Afghanistan concluded in Doha on Monday. A group of Taliban members met a 60-member delegation of Afghan representatives, including politicians, civil society members and government officials who attended the intra-Afghan talks in their personal capacity. The Taliban representatives agreed to reduce violence by stopping attacks on religious centers, schools, hospitals, educational centers, markets, water dams and workplaces. The meeting brokered by Qatar and Germany followed separate talks between Taliban and United States diplomats to end the longest ever U.S. war in Afghanistan. Uh, well, we believe so more than ever before there is real promise, especially now that uh, the Taliban and the Americans are approaching uh, a deal. We believe we're very near. A lot of the differences have been resolved. So it's just a matter of time. The Taliban and U.S. officials are trying to strike a deal on a Taliban demand for withdrawal of U.S. and other foreign forces and a U.S. demand that the Taliban not let Afghanistan be used as a base for terrorism. Moving on, Sindhi Hindus living in Canada staged a demonstration in Mississauga City recently demanding Pakistan to stop forced religious conversion of minor Hindu girls in Sindh province. Human rights activists accuse that several girls from minority communities have been abducted, forcibly converted to Islam and married to Muslim men in Pakistan in the past few years. Scores of protesters recently staged a demonstration in Canada demanding Pakistan to stop forced religious conversion of minor Hindu girls in Sindh province and to demand justice for those who have been forcibly converted to Islam. The protesters, mostly Sindhi Hindus, highlighted that recently a teenage Hindu girl, Payal Kumari, was allegedly abducted by her teacher in Sindh province. They blame the authorities have done nothing for her recovery and her parents apprehend that she will be forcibly converted to Islam after marriage. The protesters blame Pakistan has totally failed to fulfill its obligations to protect the rights of vulnerable minorities in the country. <laughs> Hindu 
human rights activists accuse that several young Hindu and Christian girls have been abducted, forcibly converted to Islam and married to Muslim men in Pakistan in the past few years. Earlier this year, two Hindu minor sisters were reportedly kidnapped and later a video of their conversion and solemnization of their marriage according to Islamic faith surfaced in the social media. Pakistan's former president Asif Ali Zardari has said that the rule of incumbent Prime Minister Imran Khan will end within few months. He claimed that the ruling government will be dismissed through opposition's ongoing political struggle. Pakistan's former president Asif Ali Zardari on Monday said that the incumbent government of Prime Minister Imran Khan has limited time left, as it would be sent packing within three to four months. Zardari, the co-chairman of Pakistan's People's Party or PPP, met the remarks while talking to reporters at the Parliament House. He said that Imran Khan's government will not be dismissed through ballot, but after a political struggle, an opposition is doing it. Zardari's statement came after his sister Faryal Talpul's physical remand was extended for 14 days in a corruption case. Both the brother's sister Doa are being investigated in money laundering and fake bank account cases against them. They have denied the charges and have blamed the cases are politically motivated. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan's heaviest man, Noor Hassan, died of cardiac arrest on Monday after he was left unattended by the nursing staff. Hassan had undergone successful liposuction surgery last month. Pakistan's heaviest man, Noor Hassan, died in hospital on Monday after he suffered a heart attack. Hassan was left unattended by the nursing staff who fled to deal with a disturbance in the intensive care unit or ICU of the hospital in Lahore. Hassan, weighing over 727 pounds, had undergone successful liposuction surgery last month and was being kept in the ICU for further observation. Treating surgeon Dr. Mazul Hassan said upon the return of medical staff to the ICU that Hassan had already suffered a heart attack and all attempts to resuscitate him were futile. Hassan's wife Maluka Bibi blamed her husband's death on the relatives of the other patient who caused the disruption in the hospital. Meanwhile, a hospital spokesperson said that they were investigating the incident and examining CCTV footage. Last month, the army helped rescue Hassan from his home and transferred him to hospital after a plea for help on social media by the father of seven yielded no responses. A group of Tamil refugees from Sri Lanka submitted their request for Indian citizenship to the authorities in India's southern Tamil Nadu province. Hundreds of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees have been living in India after fleeing nearly three decades of civil war, which ended in the year 2009. Hundreds of Tamil refugees from Sri Lanka living in the outskirts of Coimbatore and in India's southern Tamil Nadu province petitioned to the administration for citizenship on Monday. A group of representatives of the refugees submitted their request to Coimbatore district collector. They said that they do not trust the Sri Lankan government and express security concerns back in Sri Lanka. They said their children who have been born and brought up in India are undergoing an identity crisis. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of Sri Lankan Tamils fled to India during nearly three decades of civil war. 
Thousands of people were killed and tens of thousands uprooted from their homes in the war, which ended in 2009. Most victims were Tamils, an ethnic and religious Hindu minority. India's paramilitary Indo-Tibetan border police or IDBP has said the challenge in retrieving the bodies of seven climbers killed in an avalanche near the country's second highest mountain in May was nature. The force was leading the mission to bring back the bodies to the town of Pithoragar in Uttarakhand province. India's Indo-Tibetan Border Police or ITBP on Monday said the challenge was to fight nature in retrieving the bodies of seven climbers killed in an avalanche near the country's second highest mountain in May. ITBP climbers last week brought down the bodies of the mountaineers found dead on the Nanda Devi East Peak in Uttarakhand. Director General of ITPP Surjit Singh Deswal said that the terrain and climate including snowfall and strong winds of low oxygen level were big hindrances for the rescue officials during the operation. You have seen the terrain, the very height of that terrain, altitude is almost 21,000 feet. Uh, it is very humanly very difficult just to walk at this that height the climate and the snowfall you have seen, that is the challenge was uh, to uh, fight the nature, challenge was uh, to uh, reach there. There were eight climbers, four from Britain, two from the US and one each from Australia and India who reportedly went missing on May 31st after they failed to return to their base camp near Nanda Devi. The body of one of the climbers has still not been found. The climbers were attempting to scale an unnamed, previously unclimbed 21,250 feet peak near Nanda Devi when their route was hit by an sizable avalanche. The largest library in India, Srinagar City, being run by all female staff, is giving new goals to women folk in the region. The library, which has a huge collection of books in several different languages, is managed by all women classifiers, librarians and even computer operators. The largest library in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province, which was inaugurated last year, is now being run by an all-female staff, giving new aspirations to women folk. Sri Pratap Singh or SPS library, which is located in Srinagar's busy Lal Chowk area, has all-female as its staff, including classifiers, librarians and even computer operators who maintain the record of thousands of books. The library hosts a collection of books in several different languages like English, Urdu, Arabic, Persian, Sanskrit and Kashmiri. It also has a collection of 74 manuscripts in Persian, Sanskrit, Arabic and Urdu. I feel proud that we are here, we have such things here. मतलब जैसे मैं या मेरा स्टाफ यहाँ पे अच्छे से सर्व करेगा ये कुछ तो जब यहाँ पे फीमेल फोक आएगा वो देखेगा कि ऐसे मतलब वो खुद ही एनकरेज हो जाएगी कि उनमें भी ये इंटरेस्ट बढ़ेगा यहाँ का जो माहौल है काफी पीसफुल है और जो यहाँ के हमारे फीमेल स्टाफ है वो भी काफी मतलब हमारे साथ कॉपरेट करता है जैसे कि मैं हिंदी कैप्टन हूँ और मुझे वो बहुत अच्छे से लोक ऑफ़र करते हैं और काफी अच्छे से पेश आते हैं in the last one year, SPS Library has attracted crowds of regular visitors who spend hours in the modern and high-tech library. The library with much appreciated women staff is playing an important role in providing all type of educational material to the students, teachers and common people under one roof in the region. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.